3. How are xerophytes and hydrophytes adapted to their habitats? Xerophytes Thick waxy cuticle, minimize water loss. Leaves are folded and reduced in size, to minimize stomatal transpiration. Sunken stomata, to reduce rate of transpiration. Thick succulent leaves, side branches, or stems, for water storage. Shedding of leaves during the dry periods, to reduce surface area exposed for transpiration. Reverse stomatal rhythm, prevent excessive loss of water. Deep penetrating roots, to absorb water from deep below the surface. Superficial roots, to absorb surface water runoff. Leaves covered in scales hairs, to trap a moist layer of air, to reduce the rate of transpiration. Drought resistant seeds, that remain dormant till favorable weather resumes. 52. Underground organs, corms bulbs, for storage of water and reproduction. Most stomata located on the lower leaf surface, to avoid exposure to direct light, to reduce evaporation. Reduced number of stomata, to reduce the rate of transpiration. Hydrophytes. Stomata on the upper surface of leaves, to provide a large surface area for gaseous exchange, and loss of excess water. Poorly developed roots that lack root hairs, to reduce avoid absorption of water. Aranchyma tissue in leaves, stems and roots, to store air, and for buoyancy. Deeply dissected leaves, to provide a large surface area for absorption of light. Highly sensitive, and numerous chloroplasts, for photosynthesis. 53. Greatly reduced vascular bundle, to avoid absorption of water. Flowers raised above the water, to allow for pollination. Lack of a cuticle or very thin cuticle, for faster loss of water. 4. Outline the differences between wind and insect pollinated flowers. Flowers of wind pollinated plants are small, with no bracts, sepals, or petals, if present the petals are small inconspicuous, often white or green in color. While insect pollinated flowers are large, often with brightly colored petals, bracts, or inflorescence, to attract insects. Flowers of wind pollinated plants have no nectaries. And no scent, while flowers of insect pollinated plants are scented, and produce nectar. In wind pollinated flowers, the anthers are large, and loosely attached on a flexible filament, to allow pollen grains to be readily released when wind blows. 54. On the anthers, while anthers of insect pollinated flowers are usually small, and firmly attached on the filaments, this ensures that the insect rub against the anther, as they crawl into the flower collecting pollen grains onto their bodies. In wind pollinated flowers, the stigmas are feathery. Widely spread, this acts as nets to catch pollen as it floats through the air, while in insect pollinated flowers the stigmas are small, smooth, and sticky, and are also enclosed. This feature ensures that pollen grains from the body of an insect stick onto it. In wind pollinated flowers, the flowers In wind pollinated flowers, the flowers are simple with no particular shape, while some flowers that are insect pollinated have petals with grooves or dark lines, leading from the petal border to the nectaries. Some have tubular or funnel-shaped corolla, and landing platforms, to guide the insect to the source of the nectar for their food. Flowers of wind-pollinated plants are either on long
Flowers of wind-pollinated plants are either on long stalks above the leaves, or develop from flower buds that open before the leaf buds, to increase the flower exposure to air currents, while flowers of insect. Pollinated plants are on short stalks, often enclosed by the corolla. <laughs>